Welcome back! We've made it to the X on the map here with Sophia, so let's see what's in store for us. Look what we found, an abandoned dig site. Paydirt. Wait, where are you going? I sense the presence of Nurab Sal. Uh-oh. I should have guessed. Indy! Hold on, Sophia. Indy! <laughs> Sophia! Uh-oh. Sophia? Uh-huh. Did you find Nurab Sal down there? You're dead meat. <laughs> you speak up, I didn't catch that. I said you're dead meat. Okay, I know that's not very nice, but I couldn't help myself. There's a truck over here. We might be able to make some use out of that. Uh, it would certainly be a little bit easier to control than the balloon. The engine won't start for some reason. Well, that's not good either. Let's take a look at the hood. There's a plug missing. Spark plug missing. That's also not good. The engine's missing a spark plug and a distributor cap. So there's two things missing. Alright, we got our work cut out for us. I'll tell you what though, before we start looking around, I'm actually going to take some uh, time to read the Lost Dialogue of Plato first, because I happen to know that we're going to need it here in just a few minutes, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. The Hermocrates. Now at last, I have Plato's Lost Dialogue translated entirely. The Greek original is lost, so I've used the Arabic text I found in an Italian monastery years ago and always thought was a hoax. Now I wonder, could this remarkable book hold the secret to long-lost Atlantis? Probably not. No one will publish it, that's certain. The fear of ridicule is too great. To be safe, I've sent a copy to Ward. Charles Sternhardt, London, 1922. Hermocrates. In shame I hereby do recant the time and place where Critias spoke. In rendering Egyptian into Greek, he made a tenfold error. Instead of lying 3,000 miles hence, Atlantis may well have been 30,000 miles away. Or perhaps it was less than 300 miles from our own shores. Likewise, it may be that the Lost Kingdom held sway as many as 100,000 years ago, or as few as 1,000. Socrates. If a kingdom arose on Earth beyond anywhere men might travel, then we would never hear of it. We ought to accept the lesser figure. So glorious Atlantis founded two colonies, the lesser 180 miles northwest of the city and the greater 630 miles away southeast. Gates of the kingdom opened only with the aid of special stones. At many outposts, a sunstone sufficed if hot sunlight bathed the tall horns. At the greater colony, a moonstone was also needed, with the noon sun riding above the full moon. To approach Atlantis itself, a world stone was required as well, with darkness ruling the old city without challenge. Final entrance yielded only to contrary minds. And it is said that dwellers in Atlantis had no horses, nor any need of them. Or at Calcum, the metal that glittered like fire, this they had instead. They cast it into shiny beads and used them as we do minted coins, paying statues to do their work as if by magic. When their colonies were failing, wise men carved strange devices out of amber to search for the metal, but only proud Atlantis ever yielded a supply. Socrates, you have called the kingdom wealthy, but surely this is absurd. As the waters rose around their city, the kings of Atlantis, one after another, sought to hold off fate. Knowing mortal men would never rule the sea, they planned a huge colossus, which by use of oracalcum, ten beads at a time, would make them like the gods themselves. Nurab Sal was one such king. He it was, say the wise men of Egypt, who first put men in the Colossus, making many freaks of nature at times when the celestial spheres were well aligned. Socrates. This I doubt. We are hearing a child's tale. Perhaps so, perhaps not. We'll have to wait and see, though. But this uh, uh, explains what we were hearing about earlier with a tenfold error. Um, and it also gives us some clues for puzzles uh, later on. As well as some helpful information about Atlantis. So let's go ahead and head to the actual dig part of the dig site, since uh, Sophia is probably down at this level-ish. But it's dark in here. And our look at button has been replaced with a touch button, you'll see. So let's take a look around here and just see what we can find. 
It's either a hose or a sleeping snake. I hope it's a hose. Me too. It feels like a clay jar. Well, let's pick that up. Oh, wait, that was something else. That was some sort of wooden peg. Here we go, pick up clay jar. There we go. Uh, and we've got the snake. I guess we can try to pick it up. And it's a hose. That's good. Metal thing. It feels like a portable generator. Well, that's promising because we need some light in here. Does it have an on-off switch? I saw something there. Little metal thing. Feels like an on-off switch. Well, let's try pushing that. Nothing's happening. Maybe it's out of gas. Out of gas? Well, that's not good. Is there some sort of Furio metal cap? It feels like a gas cap. Okay, that's a good sign. Let's open that up. Now it's open. Can we... I guess we can't really look in there to see what's going on, so... Let's go ahead and head back outside, because we do know of something that does have some gas, or at least is supposed to have some gas, the truck, but at this point, who knows? The truck is missing a lot of things, so it could be missing gas as well. Maybe somebody already siphoned it out of there. Um, let's look at the gas tank. I didn't mean to close the hood. That's where the gas is. Let's try using the hose on it. And attaching the jar to the end of the hose. That's enough. The jar is full. Good. It did have some gas. It's a hose sticking out of a gas tank. Yeah, I meant to pick it up. I keep right-clicking. Don't mean to do that. So now that we got a gas-filled jar, then hopefully this... Uh, We'll work on the generator, hopefully, uh, it's, uh, well, this is the 40s, they don't have ethanol and all that, so it should be okay. Let's see, gas filler pipe, there you are. I've emptied the jar into the pipe. Good, alright, so now let's use that switch again. Little, where are you? I saw you there. There you are. Aha! That is a good... good sight. I like light. And it looks like there's quite a few things here in this room. It's a painting of a chest or ark. I've seen that before. A few times. And there's something here that these folks are holding. Is that a ball these figures are tossing around? Or a stone disc? Well, based on what we've been hearing and what we've got here in our hand, it probably is a stone disc. Can we touch this? If this ever held a secret, somebody beat me to it. That's a bummer. In the other two paths, there is going to be something here, but in this one, there isn't. Still, you can do that. It's nice that the designers thought of that. And there is a ship rib over here. It's a particularly sharp ship rib. Well, let's pick that up. But the only other thing that we can look at here is this crumbling wall. There seems to be something else over here, though, but the game's not letting me look at it. It's a crumbling rock wall. Well, let's see if there's something behind it. We can scrape it off with the ship rib. This looks like it could work. There's a mural behind this crumbling rock. Great. It's a map of the island of Crete with a hole in the middle. Hmm, didn't I read about that in the Lost Dialogue? Hmm, hole in the middle, huh? Is it possible that Crete is one of these, uh, colonies that we've been hearing about? Well, we do have one thing that could fit into the hole. The peg. But what do we do now? It's the wooden peg inserted into the hole in the map. Well, Plato's Lost Dialogue also mentioned that many outposts uh, of Atlantis uh, required a sunstone, and we do have a sunstone, which is round, and this thing is round. So let's see if this works. 
it fits. And now we gotta decide what we're going to do here uh, as far as turning it. There are tall horns here, and the dialogue also mentions that the uh, hottest sun would be under the tall horns, which would be at noon. Now this is going to be random each time you play the game. The, what's in the dialogue is not going to be the same, so you may get a different configuration for each stone. But for the sunstone, in our case, it's going to be the noon sun. So let's see if it works. Sophia? There she is. I thought you were going to leave me in there. No. Believe me, I was tempted. Lucky you didn't. Here's something we may need. A distributor cap. Awesome. It fell on my head when I sank into the hole. And that's not all. Look! What is it? It's an amber fish on a string. I can see that. What does it do? How should I know? I suppose you've come up with something more interesting. Maybe. Look where the sunstone is centered on the mural. The island of Crete. I'll bet Crete is where we'll find the greater colony of Atlantis, Plato mentioned. That sounds possible. Let's go! Well, we might have uh, an idea of what the amber, on, uh, amber fish on a string does, because the dialogue mentioned that the Atlanteans um, used amber to find Orichalcum. So maybe this is some sort of uh, device that they crafted to make sure that they could find it. But we need our sunstone, so let's go ahead and pick it up. And we can also pick up the peg if we want, so that's not really going to uh, do anything except close the door. In the fist's path, you would need to go through the door because somebody would be up here shooting at you and you would need to leave the peg in there, but we don't need to. It's also not necessary for anything later on either, but oh, whoop, 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 I forgot something. We need a spark plug. Let's see if the generator here has a spark plug. I t almost forgot about that. There we go. I better turn the generator on first. Oh, good points. All right, Sophia, don't mind the dark here. Push button. There we go. Now let's pick up that spark plug. Ceramic thing. Can we pick it up? Oh, we got it. Okay, good. <laughs> I didn't even see it there. I'm not all here today. But thankfully we got both the parts we need to operate the trucks, so we're n no longer uh, stuck here at the dig site and can move on to the island of Crete. So let's use our... no, I didn't want to close that. Let's use our plug here. What do you know? A perfect fit. And somehow the plug that works in the generator and the plug that works on the truck are exactly the same. It fits. Perfect. All right. Let's get out of here. Let's book passage to Crete, Sophia. All right. Off to Crete we go. Quite a nice little place. Looks like that plane dropped us off of the docks, so... We would have to call another one over if we were to get out of here, probably. It's just about the same size as the stone discs. Interesting. Can we use our sunstone on it? We can. Well, let's try this again. Noon sun. Well, that didn't do anything. But nothing happens. Well, that's not cool. But actually, this makes sense, because the dialogue mentioned that's the greater colony, um, oh, and the lesser colony, required more than just the sunstone. So if this is indeed the greater colony, then we would also need a moonstone as well. So let's go ahead and pick this up. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. That still didn't do anything. Yeah, 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 I just needed to pick it up. There you go. But there's nothing we else we can do here. I'm assuming this would probably open up one of these doors or something, but until we find another stone, we're pretty much on our own. 
Well, let's go ahead and head over this way to the left. Whoop. I guess there's nothing up there. Let's go this way to the left. Walk to path. That sure is a path. And I guess Sophia's not gonna... Oh, there she is. <laughs> I was gonna say, I don't think she was gonna come with us there for a minute. And it looks like we got some ruins here of some sorts. But we'll have to check them out in the next video.